Hey, you've made it to lesson 14. That's pretty awesome. Two weeks in. How about we do this? Lesson 14. God did not create a meaningless world. The idea for today is, of course, the reason why a meaningless world is impossible. What God did not create does not exist. And everything that does exist, exists as he created it. The world you see has nothing to do with reality. It is of your own making, and it does not exist. The exercises for today are to be practiced with eyes closed throughout. The mind searching period should be short, a minute at most. Do not have more than three practice periods with today's idea unless you find them comfortable. If you do, it will be because you really understand what they are for. The idea for today is another step in learning to let go the thoughts that you have written on the world and see the word of God in their place. The early steps in this exchange, which can truly be called salvation, can be quite difficult and even quite painful. Some of them will lead you directly into fear. You will not be left there. You will go far beyond it. Our direction is toward perfect safety and perfect peace. With eyes closed, think of all the horrors in the world that cross your mind. Name each one as it occurs to you and then deny its reality. God did not create it, and so it is not real. Say, for example, God did not create that war, and so it is not real. God did not create that airplane crash, and so it is not real. God did not create that disaster, specify the disaster, and so it is not real. Suitable subjects for the application of today's idea also include anything you are afraid might happen to you or to anyone about whom you are concerned. In each case, name the disaster quite specifically. Do not use general terms. For example, do not say God did not create illness, but God did not create cancer or heart attacks or whatever may arouse fear in you. This is your personal repertory of horrors at which you are looking. These things are part of the world you see. Some of them are shared illusions, and others are part of your personal hell. It does not matter. What God did not create can only be in your own mind apart from His. Therefore, it has no meaning. In recognition of this fact, conclude the practice periods by repeating today's idea. God did not create a meaningless world. The idea for today can of course be applied to anything that disturbs you during the day aside from the practice periods. Be very specific in applying it. Say, God did not create a meaningless world. He did not create, specify the situation which is disturbing you, and so it is not real. So I've decided instead of demonstrating the actual meditation, I'm just going to go through the text and explain the things the way it makes sense to me. By now, you should feel comfortable to do the lessons on your own. I hope you have your own text. If you're more digital, you can download an app and it has everything on it. I think it's even free. If you're like me and you'd like a tangible thing, you can go to acim.org and find the book online. All right, let's just go through this bit by bit. The first thing that might stick out to you is the use of God and he, and you might think, well, I don't think of God as a he. I don't even call God, God. The labels used really don't matter. Somewhere I was listening to either a tape of Ken Wapnick, don't remember where this came from, but basically that we need to not get hung up on pronouns, on words, which really are meaningless. It's just to convey a message. And think of it as all-inclusive. Think of us as all brothers. Brothers are not just the gender male. And besides, now that we're in such a gender-fluid world, I mean, what is father anyway? What is brother? So try not to get hung up on these words. They really are inclusive if you let them be. Maybe it's your own resistance that would keep you from benefiting from the course. I know that might be annoying to hear, but perhaps it's an opportunity to forgive or let go of judgment. The first paragraph is really bringing back that idea that what we see is all based on our perception. So the world you see, you created it. God didn't create it, you did. That was hard for me to swallow. When I read that, I was not exactly in the happiest place. And to realize that it was my fault, but not in a way that I needed to feel shame or guilt, but in a way of empowerment of, Okay, well, if I don't like the way things are right now, what can I do right now to change it? Maybe it's as simple as just changing my attitude, changing my mind, and seeing how that affects 
what happens around me. And sometimes when you're in that dark place, that's the last thing you want to hear. But whether you want to believe it or not, it really is the truth. Okay, I'm going to skip down to paragraph three. The idea of letting go of the thoughts we've written on the world and seeing the Word of God in their place is so much bigger than you may even realize right now. It's just now starting to make sense to me as I work the material. The first part of the second sentence says, The early steps in this exchange which can truly be called salvation. My background includes a lot of religion and Christianity. I think I'm finally starting to understand salvation. In trying to explain this in a way that doesn't sound so churchy, this course is saving me. This course is helping me find true peace, true forgiveness, true love for myself. And when I find that for myself, I'm able to then give it to others. What you don't have, you can't give. If you don't have love within you, you can't give it to anyone else. Think about it. So this course really is my salvation. It has saved my life. It's as simple as that. And then how sweet is the course? Sentence three of paragraph three. Some of them will lead you directly into fear. You will not be left there. You will go far beyond it. Whoever you want to believe is speaking to you through this course knows where you are because they've been there. I was scared and I put the book down for like, I don't know, three or four months, maybe longer. Maybe it was more like six. I don't even know anymore. It doesn't really matter. But you will not be left there. You will go far beyond fear towards perfect safety and perfect peace. What could possibly be more exciting? Because when you feel perfectly safe and you feel perfectly peaceful, you feel like you can do anything. You have the courage to move forward knowing that everything is going to be just fine. So maybe it's quitting your job and starting that company that you've always wanted to start but you were afraid of. Maybe it's chopping your hair off. Maybe it's moving across the country to pursue a dream that you're not even really sure what it is yet, but you just feel the compulsion to go. Maybe it's something much simpler, giving your husband a hug in the morning before he goes to work, and that could be the thing that saves you. So it could be huge, could be small, but regardless, this course has helped me in all of those aspects of my life. Because in the eyes of the course, nothing is great or small. Everything is the same. We may not see it that way, but choosing to hug your husband, if maybe you had a tough night the night before, you guys maybe were arguing about something, that is equally difficult and beautiful as picking up and moving across the country. It really is. Trust me. Okay, so the part where it's talking about these different aspects, God did not create it and so it is not real. That may sound like denial, and you think, hey, we're not supposed to be in denial. But also, how many times have you heard, if there's a God, how can there be children in poverty? And how can there be sickness and, and death? Well, God didn't make that. We did. It's true. What? How did we make leukemia for little babies? I don't have the answers to that. But I do know that what we think and what we fear and what we worry about and what we focus on can become our reality. I also know that holding on to unforgiveness or shame or guilt or fear or worry, that these things are toxic. I was really sick for almost the whole month of March. It was ridiculous. It was very frustrating. I thought, what? I'm doing the course. I don't believe in sickness. Why am I sick? And I had to sit with it. And I uncovered a lot of these things I call micro judgments that I wasn't even aware I was doing. They were so tiny, they just snuck in. And I realized that I created that sickness. I wanted to be sick. Even though I didn't, I did. I wanted the excuse to lay on my butt, and watch TV, and meditate as much as I want, and nobody could bother me, and I didn't have to answer to anyone. It was kind of awesome in that sense. Sure, my nose was running, my throat hurt, my head hurt. It was tough, but at the same time, it was also really nice. And I had to recognize that and admit that. In paragraph six, where it talks about this is your personal repertory of horrors, I'm just now realizing how incredible this lesson is because it's helping you drudge up the things that you're terrified of. It's helping you look at them and bring them to the surface and acknowledge them. Because until you recognize what you're afraid of, or what you're worried about, how can you possibly work through it and overcome it and be on the other side of it? Sometimes we want to try to dig a tunnel under or try to find a way around, but the truth is we have to work through it. And sometimes it's a little bit messy and a little bit difficult, but as we move through it, it gets easier and we get better and we get stronger and it starts to make more sense. 
So God did not create a meaningless world. I hope you love this lesson. There's one thing I want to say before I go. In the preface, they make a point of saying this that I find so important. The names of the collaborators in the recording of the course do not appear on the cover because the course can and should stand on its own. It is not intended to become a basis for another cult. Its only purpose is to provide a way in which some people will be able to find their own internal teacher. Notice it says some people. Not all people, not everyone, but some people. This course does not speak to everyone, and that is okay. There are many paths to salvation. This one just happens to be the one that speaks to me the most and has really helped me change and be able to find my own internal teacher. Everything I'm sharing with you, my inner being is teaching me, and I can't wait for you to get to the point where your internal being is teaching you. And then we can just communicate to each other from both of our internal higher selves and have mind-blowing conversations that just, I don't know, are exciting. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.